Hello. So we have here a 2007 Chevy Colorado Z71 i5 with 186,000 miles on it. As you can see, there is a check engine light. Plugging in my code scanner, I'm getting code P0341 camshaft position sensor A circuit range performance B1 and also a P0340 camshaft position sensor A circuit bank one or single sensor so I've been doing some research online and identified the camshaft position sensors apparently this is a fairly common problem in this vehicle Went to my local auto parts store. Had a hard time finding the right sensors, even though I knew what I needed going in. So I looked it up online. They were not able to find them, just one of them on the shelves. So I wound up with two different brands. I always recommend looking up your parts online before you go into any store, just so that you know what you're looking for. Because sometimes the parts clerks aren't as familiar with your vehicle as you might be. So I wound up with two different brands. I have a Duralast SU8907, which according to the website, this is the intake side. Now these vehicles do have two sensors. I also have a Dorman. 907-732 this is the exhaust side sorry it's a little windy out here today so I'm not exactly sure which sensor those error codes are pointing to I decided to err on the side of caution and just replace them both Price for these parts, $31.99, $36.99, with tax came out to $73.12. I'm sure I could have gotten them much cheaper online, but since this issue just occurred last night and I almost wasn't able to get home, I wanted to replace them sooner rather than later. Actually, when the issue occurred, I had just driven to the grocery store, parked for about an hour, went to leave, and the car wouldn't start. It was a crank no start. Um, eventually, after a few minutes of sitting there, I tried it a couple more times, and it was able to start up. Um, obviously, I don't want to have it die on the side of the road, so I get this changed sooner rather than later. Now, the position of the sensors, if it looks a little wet down there, as I just sprayed some engine clean engine cleaner. I believe this is the intake sensor, and I believe this is the exhaust sensor over here on the passenger side. I hope I don't have them backwards. It was really hard finding accurate information about the location of these sensors on the forums. Also over here, I just wanted to point out, this is a related sensor. This is a um, exhaust uh, solenoid down right here. Um, I've, I've read a lot that in the past that this piece has screens inside. The screens can fall out into the oil pan which will trigger I believe it's a P0014 or 0017 error code so that's not the codes I'm getting so I don't think this is the piece that's at fault if I could have I would have picked one of these up today just to you know as a preventative measure but they didn't have that in stock so I'm gonna try doing just the sensors first and hope that resolves my issue um, although I do at a future time plan on replacing this um, there's also a crankshaft position sensor that's on the bottom of the motor. Um, I'm going to hope I don't have to replace that. My understanding from reading online is that that requires a more uh, involved relearn process uh, when you replace it. So each of these sensors is just held in by one bolt. It's kind of hard to reach. It's probably going to be kind of hard to show on the camera. Hey, you. Your key's inside. Okay. I saw you lock the door. So I'm just... Okay, I didn't want to talk to her. You're doing a video. I <laughs> love you. So, what you think? You any Sorry about that. Um, so, the two bolts to hold in each sensor 
One is right down here, and the other one for this sensor, I believe, is, I have my finger on it right here, I can feel it. I don't know if the camera's focusing on that very well. So, I'm going to disconnect the battery. I'm going to pull the, belt, the bolts. I'm going to try to pull these two sensors out. I have to stop the camera a few times because it's hard to hold a camera and turn a wrench at the same time. Uh, let's see if I can show these wire clips. So, to pull this wire out, I did it last night as a test. You kind of have to pull the gray shield, the gray piece back. It's like a little locking type tab. I'm definitely going to need two hands for that. But you would slide the gray piece back and then you would be able to squeeze on it like you can a normal automotive connector. So first, this gray piece slides back or up towards me and then you'd be able to push in on this little tab to release the connector. So I'm going to pause the camera now, I'm going to disconnect the battery, and I'm going to disconnect those two sensors. Alright, so here we go, I've gotten those two connectors disconnected. You can see them a little better. Now that they're out, there's really not a lot of space, this is why I don't like working on cars much anymore. Everything is so tight and I have really big hands. see how the gray piece had to slide back in order to pull them off so with these two sensors out I'm gonna try to just angle them up out of the way a little bit now you can see that bolts a little better for what I assume is the intake sensor and the exhaust sensor over here on the passenger side so I'm gonna pause the video again I'm going to put my 10 millimeter wrench on those two bolts and hopefully they'll just loosen right up and pull right out. Fingers crossed. Just starting up the video one more quick second. You can see I did pull out the bolt for the front sensor and it's kind of really tricky to reach in here to where it's at and wiggle it a little bit but just by wiggling it back and forth just a little bit you can see I was able to get it out of the housing there now. I'm just going to leave that in there for right this second to keep any dirt from falling into there while I get the replacement. Pop it in there. So we're assuming that that's the intake, in which case the replacement should be the SU8907. Really would have preferred to order these from Rock Auto or somewhere, but again, seeing as I didn't want it to leave me dead on the side of the road, I wanted to get a change sooner rather than later, and sometimes you just can't wait. Shop towels out here. And here's the replacement part. You can see setting them side by side, it looks like a match. Hopefully, it'll work correctly. Wiring number of pins look, look the same. So, let me pause the video again while I install this and get it tightened down. Here's the front one all snugged back in, nice and tight. I couldn't find the Torx setting on here, but I, you know, it's just a little overhand tight. You don't need to really wrench down on these things to get them tight. Now I'm going to pause the video again and tackle the second one. This bolt feels like it's a little harder to reach than the bolt for the other one. This belt is right in the way and I don't really... Of course you could take the belt off. I'm going to try to do it without doing that because the belt is a whole other can of worms to get off. Pause the video again while I try to get the second one out. 
All right, just starting up the video again real quick. You see I was able to get the bolt for the second sensor removed, and it's now loose in there. I just have it resting in there to keep dirt from falling into the hole. You can see if you angle it down a little bit, harder to do with one hand. You can get it out without having to remove anything. And I was able to reach that bolt using a quarter drive socket or quarter drive quarter inch drive wrench with a 10 millimeter socket and just angled it down from right underneath it here so now let's inspect my other new one Physically, this other one is also a match for the one that was removed. Hopefully, once I have both of these in, I'll be able to clear my codes, or well, the codes might have cleared just by virtue of having the battery disconnected, and hopefully I won't have any more problems. One other thing I should point out while I'm under here is the two uh, grounding blocks. One on the passenger side, just behind the air cleaner. You can see it's bolt right there. And also one on the driver's side down behind the uh, ABS module here. Hopefully this will show on the camera. You can see it's bolt right here. My middle finger is on it. So anytime you're working under the hood of a Chevy Colorado uh, GMC Canyon or Hummer H3, you should always check those bolts and make sure that they're tight and not corroded. There's a whole lot of vehicle electrical systems that ground through those two bolts. Um, I've seen various fixes and workarounds on the forums, including removing the uh, module altogether and just hardwiring the wires to the uh, inner fenders. Um, I think, don't think that's quite necessary, but always, you know, just check and make sure that those bolts are tight because that can cause a lot of electrical problems with the vehicle should either of those become loose. So now I'm going to put my other new sensor in. I'm going to tighten everything back down and... We're going to reconnect the battery and cross our fingers. All right, moment of truth. I've got my exhaust and intake cam sensors replaced. I checked my grounding blocks. Those are nice and tight. I reconnected my battery ground, made it nice and tight. Let's fire it up and see what happens. It's probably... Okay. Like that the battery was unhooked. There we go. Fired right up. Parking brake light is lit. Seat belt light is lit. New check engine light. So that obviously reset itself uh, owing to the battery being disconnected. Let's see. Time. Is this clock right? No update. Oh, wow. I guess the clock retained its settings. All right, cool. So, everything sounds good. There was a little squeak when I first started it. That's probably because of the uh, engine cleaner I sprayed around the front of the engine. And you can see everything looks good. Sounds good. No check engine lights. Started right up. See what the code scanner reads. Just for the heck of it. Alright, this is saying everything is okay. Evap system on or incomplete, probably because it needs to go through so many cycles. I think this I think that's why they say incomplete because the battery was disconnected and it needs to relearn some of this stuff. This is my cheap scan tool. I have a bigger one for more complex problems, but this one does just fine. I toss it under the seat and pull that out whenever I need it. Definitely worth the 40 or so bucks that they are on uh, eBay. So no codes. Don't have to erase codes. This can read codes, erase codes, view data, communicating with the vehicle. 
get different information. Temperature, engine speed, RPM, coolant temperature, ignition advance, vehicle speed. I'm curious to see how accurate that vehicle speed is. One of these days I should take it out on the highway and test it. But in any case, I hope this video has been useful to you. It, it does appear to have resolved my P0301 and P0341 error codes by replacing those two sensors. If you liked this video, or if this video was helpful for you, please like and subscribe to my channel. I do do um, periodic videos related to uh, Chevy Colorado troubleshooting maintenance and tips, uh, which is also applicable to any of the first generation GMC Hummer or, uh, or GMC Canyon or Hummer H3 trucks, of which I know there's quite a few still on the road. Thank you for watching.